Hello and welcome viewers. You're watching Perspective with your host Kruti Mishra. Amid rising cases of influenza and COVID-19, countrywide mock drills will be conducted on April 10th and 11th. A joint advisory issued by the Union Health Ministry and the Indian Council of Medical Research read that both public and private health facilities in all districts of the country are likely to take part in the exercise to assess the availability of medicines, hospital beds, medical equipment and medical oxygen. Remember last week, Prime Minister Narendra Modi also chaired a high-level meeting to assess the COVID-19 and influenza situation in the country. During the meeting, he assessed the preparedness of health infrastructure and logistics, status of vaccination campaign, emergence of new COVID-19 variants and influenza types and their public health implications for the country. And for deeper insights on this emerging situation, I'm joined by an illustrious panel of guests. Joining us through virtual platform, Dr. N.K. Arora, Chairman, National Technical Advisory Group on Immunization. Also joining us, Professor N.K. Ganguly, former DG, Indian Council of Medical Research. And in the studio, we have with us Dr. K. Madan Gopal, Senior Consultant, Health, Niti Ayog. I welcome all of you to Sunset TV and thank you so much for joining us. And Dr. N.K. Arora, let me begin the program with you. With over 1,800 new COVID cases recorded in the last 24 hours, the active caseload crossed the 10,000 mark, indicating a continued uptick in the infections. Sir, help us understand what is driving this uptick. Uh, thank you very much, Kriti, for inviting. And you are right that we had reached a nadir of about 150 or 140 cases a day almost six weeks ago. And gradually it is uh, inching up and as you rightly said in last 24 hours it was 1800 plus cases and uh, uh, in fact when we look at the genomic surveillance data right from january uh, onwards the most of the viruses are xbb virus and its various variants it is interesting that in january there were only four strains of four isolates of XBB 1.16. But in February and now March, it has gradually increased and it is about 60% of all the isolates today. Now, having said that, it appears that this particular virus may be a little more infectious and be able to infect even those who are previously immunized. But the important point is that despite mild increase, there is no increase in the uh, proportion of severe cases or deaths associated with that. So these are mostly mild cases. Another issue which is uh, uh, important to keep in mind is that the total number of uh, testings ha have gone down. It was less than 100,000 and there is an effort that this testing should increase so that uh, we are able to really see uh, to what extent uh, the cases are occurring. Third thing is that we see this particular virus in seven, eight states across the country. So it is not a localized uh, a kind of an outbreak, with, but it is more generalized. So in all, overall, it appears that we need to be careful, but not get frightened and keep a close watch and highly endorse this strategy of mock drill, which uh, you mentioned uh, the government of India is proposing for the whole country. Absolutely, sir. A very important point that you're making here that let's be careful and let's not get scared. But Professor N.K. Ganguly, the rates of hospitalization and deaths remain low due to the significant COVID-19 vaccination coverage. But sir, how do we reinvigorate public health actions to contain the surge? Oh, no, what happens is that uh, the, the respiratory infections are seasonal. In northern India, it occurs in two seasons. In southern India, it is uniformly spread throughout the year. So this is the respiratory virus infection season at this given moment. And like uh, influenza viruses, COVID has now established itself. It will appear with influenza viruses and respiratory sensitive viruses during these seasons. So it is very apt that the government India of India this time is having a preparedness drill to see that oxygens are available, the beds are available, the, uh, the, um, the supplies are all available, so that if it goes out of hand, then it will be able to deal with it. 
in United States, again, an XXB 1.5 variant is there, ours is 1.6 variant. United States, it is happening many more, about 41% increase happened during the last week. In our cases, it is it is 0.102% increase, which is not alarming, as Dr. Rora said. More than 5% increase is a real alarming thing, but it is at this moment not alarming. And the deaths is happening in older people. So yes. older people have immunosense, that is, uh, the immune system doesn't work very well. A recent study, which has been done in Southampton University, has shown that. And we have almost about one year, we didn't have any vaccination. But we have a immunity level quite good, both in children as well as in adults at this given moment. So I, I will endorse what Dr. Arora said, that we should not get alarmed, but we should be ready and we should get vaccinated. Nobody is taking vaccination. We have deal vaccinations are yearly vaccinations as, as it happens in the virus. So apart from all the precautions which we were taking for the COVID and other things during these seasons, we should take vaccination. In United, the CDC and the United, United States government has said that every, anyone who above six should get vaccinated. Those who have got two vaccines or three vaccines, they should also get vaccinated. Or those who took one shot, they should also get a booster. And now there is, and there are some very good developments which have occurred that you can take a booster dose along with the first dose if these are new vaccines. There is something very good new development which has occurred. And, and some of the things which are available, which are now the hybrid vaccine, the two Omicron variant vaccines are also available. And we should see that these new vaccine developments come and vaccine, primary vaccination drive, and the vaccination drive should go on. There, some or other, the Indians have become very complacent and nobody is going for vaccination. So this is something which is worrisome and we should see that the vaccination efforts are continued. Absolutely, Professor Ganguly, as you're saying that there is no space and there is no scope of complacency. But talking about this particular variant, Dr. Gopal, what sets this variant apart from the others? And of course, our panelists have been endorsing the view that this is not alarming right now. Uh, thank you, Kriti. Uh, as you are seeing the COVID virus, it is surprising us. The moment we think that it is coming down, a sub upsurge is there. So it's not uh, particular about the India, but uh, if you look at the other countries, UK, right. France, China, Russia, our neighboring countries, that uh, South Korea also, they are reporting a surge of cases. That's right. So it is surprising all the nations. Uh, when the epidemic progresses, uh, when it it well, moving towards the endemicity, usually these kind of features are available. Last time also, last year also, when the respiratory virus season was declining, there was an upsurge of COVID, COVID virus. But fortunately, about the variant, the Omicron, because... Uh, after Omicron, we have not seen any other variant because we have seen the Wuhan strain, Delta strain, the Omicron strain. After Omicron, these are all the lineages of Omicron, XSB, XSB 1.5 or the new strain which is available, XSB 1.16. So that strains are there, but it is all lineages of Omicron virus. That means the good thing is that for the last more than 17 months, uh, there is no major change in the virus uh, variant. That means still we are having the Omicron is the uh, dominant variant and that's one thing. Second thing, last time as, as we have seen when the respiratory virus seasons were declining, there, there was an upsurge in the COVID virus uh, occurrence in the country. Second thing which is more uh, needs to be watched is the testing positivity rate. That's right. Along with the number of cases, uh, the alarming thing is that testing positivity rate is also increasing. Previously, we were used to have a testing positivity of 0.1%. Right. Now, it has reached more than 1.5%. That's true. That means it is rising. If you look at the testing positivity rate across the country, the infection has spread across the country. Around uh, Today, around uh, 90 districts, they are having testing positivity rate of more than 5%. And some of the districts, they have having a, having a testing positivity of around 30%. That mm -hmm. means the infection is there. So one of the important thing is that we have to understand that infection is spreading and the district which don't have a surge today, 
they need to be prepared that and need to monitor the testing positivity rate if a slight indication of the uh, increase in the upsurge in the testing positivity rate they need to alarm and take the steps for early detection of the infection so that it can be so that the five strategy which we are having so that can be implemented absolutely dr gopal but what uh, makes the matters more complicated is the fact that it is occurring along with the type of influenza surge that we are seeing in the country so what happened last time also as i mentioned when the influenza surge was declining the covid uh, upsurge start coming this is a phenomena which we have seen last year also this year also we are witnessing the same thing the influenza and the respiratory virus season is tapering down we are at the tape end of the tapering end of the respiratory virus now we are seeing a surge in the covid vaccine no uh, covid covid uh, uh, cases so that kind of phenomena was the seen last year also this year also we are seeing the same thing and uh, last year also after a big surge uh, it has come down the that means there is no need for that kind of worry because the variant has not changed only the sib lineages and other things because the virus also wants to coexist with us and we have to coexist with the virus so that phenomena usually happens and you you have seen the cases will happen endemicity will happen uh, one example which i want to cite everybody talks about the spanish flu right if you try to <coughs> trace the variant uh, which has caused the spanish flu you would be finding some traces of that variant also so today the, as well yes yes you can okay. trace it so that kind of thing happens when the virus is moving towards endemicity so this is a known phenomenon and uh, it is moving in that trajectory only it's all about coexistence but certainly the virus should not be harmful or pernicious but you talked about the global scenario let me take that to dr arora dr arora we saw the increasing number of cases in some countries across the world we saw what happened in china japan south korea france and the us so any specific lessons for us Uh, there are uh, two or three very important lessons one is local epidemiology is very important so many times the virus which behaves in a particular manner uh, in let's say north america will behave in a similar manner in uh, india also the past three years experience has showed that it is not correct one very good example was uh, ba.5 which was uh, uh, causing lot of severe illness in north america and part of europe but in india it hardly kind of propagated it could not grow much so there are these uh, local issues but we need to always keep a uh, keep an eye on uh, these uh, co vari uh, the variants occurring anywhere because some i mean there can be variants which can cause severe disease and i must say that indian uh, insacog network has been working very meticulously and almost any variant which is uh, seen elsewhere is also picked up and uh, sequenced in this country you will be surprised that in 2022 over 350 uh, uh, variants of omicron were identified in this country almost every day a new variant was found so but that clearly shows that one is that we need to keep a track of it the second is we need to see that anything uh, which is causing severe disease or there is a very localized outbreak associated with severeness and uh, hospitalization so overall uh, we need to be very careful and uh, it is good that uh, these uh, uh, travelers and uh, the who the, who are coming to the country they are uh, they are being uh, sampled and that should continue that in case a new variant enters its behavior is to be watched in our setting absolutely sir you made a very pertinent point there and we've been reading about that in the newspapers as well and i want to deconstruct that for our viewers professor gangli we've been hearing about strengthening the surveillance system for whole genome sequencing of positive case samples sir help us decode that actually it is very important there is a global repository for the sequencing which is known as gisaid actually i was one of the person who established that which which actually see, looks at all the sequences which is happening around the globe but as dr arora said that uh, there are many factors in which a strain or a clade establishes in a country this happens with everything like if you take hiv there were uh, india had a c clade and in south africa africa had a african c clade europe had b clade 
and in this way there were different and there were reassortments re also this one at the moment which is happening in india is a reassortment of two omicron strains so it gives a lot of things in the polio thing we had 38 genotypes two genotypes in india established itself one one in the up in madhavad area and one from bihar not all of them established so this is something which is dependent on the environment which is dependent on the population but some strains they transcend the uh, countries and then they become a pandemic pandemic strain which ha which happened on the bs6.675 this was something which went all around the globe and created a havoc so 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 these are these some mutations become very very pernicious and they turn across the globe so we need to very carefully monitor them and mo monitoring them helps a lot but some or other the vaccination when you create a vaccine then you create something which will work everywhere like when hiv vaccine uh, stands were being designed there were is there you could not have a south african vaccine a chinese vaccine an indian vaccine and a european or american vaccine so luckily whatever covid vaccine now 12 vaccines are in the in different uh, countries their circulation some are for booster some are for primary and booster but some or other all of them work so that is a very good news and uh, and there is nothing to worry about that but but what worries me is that the vaccine complacency which is happening around the globe but one thing good which is happening that even now in the travel advisory majority of the countries have vax they look at the vaccination certificate and that is why you you saw that uh, one of our star tennis player jokovic was not allowed in uh, in uh, australia right, he is not being allowed in us now so he is stuck struggling with that so something good is happening but the uh, insago very recently when it made a statement that at this time it, it, it we need not worry about uh, about the strain variant variants they it, uh, it is not increasing in that proportion as as the previous variant or omicron variant had increased the delta variant or omicron variant has increased but this is in a surveillance sequencing becomes an important part of it but testing also becomes very part at least the sentinel surveillance and adequate testing in usa a lot of do, people do home testing right. in india it is it, it is not happening right absolutely sir i want to address the issue of uh, vaccine complacency dr arora besides finding uh, fighting this pandemic we also fought the fake news throughout the journey that since since the arrival of this uh, particular covid-19 uh, that we've been seeing so now there are a lot of concerns around the vaccine also how do you assuage all those concerns because as uh, professor ganguly is saying that vaccine complacency is the biggest thing to fight right now so oh, uh, first of all you are very right on the spot that india did extremely well we were proactive and preemptive we had expected that initial 2 3 months there will be a push back and particularly from the medical profession in uh, january february march but because of the proactive approach and uh, so the the vaccine hesitancy and reluctance gradually weaned off the other important action wa ha has been that india's surveillance for vaccine safety is also uh, a kind of strengthened several times during this last 3 years and every district has a afi surveillance team uh, or a committee and uh, which has adult physicians and this all these activities has given confidence the third thing is that india's uh, uh, because of the uh, overall india generally has a very positive uh, at indians have a positive attitude towards vaccination and that's why over 95 and it's almost 97% of adults more than 18 years have received their primary covid vaccination there is obviously a element that people were frightened and they got the vaccine now question is that there are 
at least two or three class, uh, the the population segments who must get their boosters or precaution dose. One is everybody and anybody who's above the age of 60 years because they are vulnerable. Right. Second, those who have comorbidities like diabetes, blood, uh, uh, blood disorders, liver disorders, lung disorders, kidney disorders. And third is those who, who are on cancer drugs, immunosuppression of any kind, steroids, they must receive it because the whole purpose of getting the vaccine precaution dose or booster dose today is that severe disease should not occur. That's Mild true. disease is like a URI, so it does not make too much of difference. But those who are vulnerable should go and get their booster doses. Absolutely, sir. Perfect and very, very important points are made there. Dr. Gopal, I'm absolutely out of time, but I'll uh, give you the floor for your closing comments. Uh, uh, Priti, one of the important things uh, for, during this, uh, this time is to go back to the basics. That means the people who are having symptoms, they should be at least not propagating this infection, wearing masks, so that the infection to the other person is avoided. If they are not well, they can at least work from home or uh, they can stay back so that they, they don't uh, spread out the infection. The people who are more than 60 years of age or with comorbid conditions, they should avoid uh, coming in contact with the persons who are symptomatic or who are exhibiting symptoms of respiratory infection. The third important thing, if they want to uh, go to any crowded place, they should avoid crowded places or if they have to go to that place, they use mask. Right. Sec third thing is, we have to see the ventilation aspect also. So uh, all the people who are vulnerable, as uh, mentioned by Dr. Arora, they should be at least uh, taking precautions when uh, they are venturing into a crowded place or a less ventilated place. That's right. So another important aspect is the basics. That means hand hygiene and the respiratory hygiene. That's the thing which will protect us and we will evade with the uh, this surge also. We will be able to evade this surge also. Absolutely. So the onus lies on all of us to fight this virus. And of course, we have to follow the COVID appropriate behavior. On that note, thank you so much for joining us, Dr. N.K. Arora, Professor Gangli and Dr. Gopal. Well, viewers, that's all we have for you in this edition. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to Sunset TV. Goodbye for now from my side.